another show because it comes on. Okay, we'll put it this way. The filthy stuff that they do never makes the air. It's on the DVDs. But they really, when we hear some stuff, we've heard a lot of uh, hurt feelings. I mean, we had the, like the one gentleman that we met. We did heard the Joan Rivers one. There was some, oh, some like, of the stuff is just. Cause we actually got a, um, you know, the one of the guys, the one of their roast masters, actually one of the producers of the show that died. And we're, we're talking to him, and he, he said, my family wished they'd cut this out because my children are being harassed about me being a, uh, you know, a homophobic asshole. You know, and I said, I'm not. And he, he was really, you know, we're not on camera, and he's talking about, you know, unhappiness about what they're doing to him on the show. So, but... Um, the supporting actress for the comedy, that's the next category. Yeah. Modern Family now. Julie Bowen. Yeah, and Jane Karaski, 30 Rock. Jane Lynch, Glee. Sophia Varguera. Betty White and Kristen Wiig on Saturday Night Live. We know with Jane Lynch. Well, see, part isn't she the host for the Emmys? Yeah. Yeah. But we all know every, it says, uh, it doesn't make any difference. Watch out for Betty White because Betty White is everywhere this year. She is everywhere and part of it is people love Betty White. Well, she's throwing and, multiple series at the same time. She's and, like, and it's one of those things that's like, you know, they love Betty White. They don't know how much longer she's acting, but give it to her. Okay, I, I know, I, I, I know. Cause I worked with Betty White when Betty White was handing out, I mean, it's, supposed to, it's supposed to be a secret, but Betty White used to give trading cards out. You know, she'd had a deck of cards made with Betty White in little naughty poses. I mean, I worked with her funny. in those days. We've, and, we've interviewed you know, her I mean, before. I interviewed her for a minute. I mean, we talked to her once, you know, like the, she was on one set, and I, you know, one of the shows she was doing, and basically what happens is, is they, they uh, run the battery pack for your for your wireless mic up under you know under your dress and up behind your back, and she she you know she's uh, uh, all of a sudden she's got a guy taking her dress off of her, mm -hmm. and she said you know well, I don't know why he's doing it but if it turns him on it's all right with me. Her dress had caught fire and they're getting it off of her, <laughs> but that was her response. She's just, I don't know why he's funny. doing it but if she, it turns she, him she's on. She's funny and she's just naughty. She's, she's just a funny. Very naughty old lady. She's but, funny. But they said that she's the odds-on favorite. You know, she's won seven Emmys already. They said because she, they said they've never given an Emmy to anybody that old before. And they said it's not. Here's one. They, here's how they. Here's how what they said the other night on the thing. It's not like she's not going to get another chance to get an Emmy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did that. I mean, that is really faith in her ability. Yeah. Like she's 85 years old, I think. And it's not like she's not going to get another chance. She's having the time of her life. Yeah, well, she's massively hot. Yeah, she really is. She's basic, and she'll do anything. <laughs> okay, I, I, I remember I, I remember Alan Ludden said she'll do anything for money. And he said, oh, yeah, and then he gets a smile at me. She'll do anything for money. <laughs> yeah. And she is just an absolute kick. That is her. <laughs> yeah, and then we got um, this one. Actor, miniseries, or movie. So, um... um. Edgar Ramirez and Carlos, Greg Kinnear and the Kennedys, Barry Pepper the Kennedys, Irish Elba and Luther, Lawrence Fishburne and Thug and uh, William Hurt, Too Big to Fail. It's not going to be, no matter what they say, they're not going to give, um, they're not going to give a thing to Kinnear for the Kennedys or Edgar no. Ramirez for playing a terrorist. Oh, you don't think so? No. Um, you think they'll you know, give it to William probably Hurt? William Hurt for playing Justice Thurgood Marshall, or Hurt. For, um, if they said, gonna be, it's between Fishburne and Hurt. Well, they like both of the actors. And they basically, here's the trick is, it's Fishburne is due. He has oh. spent a lifetime with people he praising have him. Yeah, he doesn't have much of anything. Oh. He has spent a lifetime, this is a guy that's played Othello. Really? He plays Shakespeare. He's played Othello. He's, well, and John, actually... John, John Hurst, an Academy Award winning actor, yeah. is basically doing a lot of TV stuff. He just did um, Moby Dick for the Encore Channel, mm -hmm. which was a cheap-ass Canadian production. They're working. Yeah, but um, basically, here's the prediction. They said, uh, basically, throw a dart and you'll figure out which one of these two is going to win. But there's basically no chance these others. You know, I think it's Lawrence Fishburne or William Hurt. I, you know, I would go right now with Lawrence Fishburne, with Lawrence Fishburne yeah. because, um, okay, uh, everybody liked Thurgood Marshall. It didn't make any difference if you're on the right or the left. 
And playing Thurgood Marshall is always a good character for a black actor because even though he was controversial, people liked him. He's playing a likable man that basically made very important decisions and agonized over the fact of what he was doing right. So that's, a, that's really a tremendous balancing act. He's trying to remember that he's a black American and I have to do things for black Americans, but at the same time, I have a constitution to uphold. Mm -hmm. So basically, they put the first black justice in a horrible spot all the time. Yeah. So he's playing that character. I remember, I think, uh, Sidney Poitier played the character, played him also, and um, and uh, and Sidney Poitier loved the character because he said, you know, Thurgood Marshall is a great character that you can get yourself into as an actor because there's so many sides to him. He's a civil rights leader, but he's also a Supreme Court justice that has to decide for the good of the nation, not just because he's a black person. So, okay, but, sounds like he's favored. Yeah, and we've got <laughs> actress, miniseries, or movie. Now, Diane Lane and Cinema Verite. Now, we did see that one. We did it, and I mean, it, it does. one of the Emmy screenings. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth Montgomery, Masterpiece Theater, Kate Winsett, Mildred. Okay, Kate Winsett. Um, okay, here's the problem. Uh, they said that she. Oh, wait, we got to tell them who no, the other but, No, it said Kate Winsett is the problem because Kate Winsett was basically, you know, it really wasn't as much a miniseries as it was actually a series. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between miniseries and series, so that is the technical situation. They're they're fudging a bit to make it a miniseries because they oh. want to do more. So. Oh, I see. There's also uh, Taraji P. Henson from Taken for Me, the Tiffany Rubin story, and Jean Marsh from Masterpiece Upstairs, Downstairs. Yeah, but here's the problem. Jean, she's a sentimental favorite. She actually created Upstairs. Okay, most people don't realize that Jean Marsh from Upstairs and Downstairs was an original Doctor Who assistant. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So she really goes back, you know, but she created Upstairs and Downstairs, and uh, while the show did well, there wasn't a lot of Emmys given to the performers. The show got all, everything. You so. know what? We've heard a lot of buzz about Mildred Pierce. Yeah, it's um, and then it's all good buzz. But yeah. the problem comes is, um, I got an Emmy nomination for something exactly like this because the show I was on was a, supposed to be a miniseries, but the thing went on for thirty-nine weeks. Yeah. That's not a miniseries, folks. Well, sometimes they put them in, in these categories. In because the they can't fit them somewhere else. They know they can't get a nomination the best, the, Yeah, they can't get it elsewhere. So this part of it is Joan Crawford won an Oscar for... I mean, um, Mildred Pierce. For Mildred Pierce. And before. basically, uh, you know, they think, here it is. It's, we know, we saw Diane Lane. She was really good. Diane at Lane was a bitch beyond belief. Yeah. And it's not Diane... Diane was playing against type because, like, like what she said, I, I always want to be Angelica Houston because Angelica Houston get to play all the bitches, mm -hmm. you know. But she also had John Houston for a father and 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 the, and, and the Walter Houston for a grandfather. So she, she sort of got, you know, when you're a princess, you get the, what you want. Mm -hmm. But she also produces her own movies and stuff. But um, Diane Lane and. Um, and the young gentleman that didn't get an Emmy nomination. Thomas which, Decker. Thomas Decker. That is the travesty. I mean, she said it's a travesty. Total and outlook. Everybody yeah. agrees it was a travesty. But the problem is Decker did Disney stuff. Oh, versus some of the other ones. Yeah, the others are really been, serious uh, actors. Uh, and I mean, we, we Decker saw, did a great job. Oh, story. we met Decker after the after the viewing, and there he is playing like he's a you know like he is the kid that he is. You know, all the all of the people. Oh yeah, he had, hi, and he said you know, and he's all wound up. He's basically hopping over things and wound up because this was his. The movie was his. Cinema Verte was based on. I mean, it's about the first family of. Um, a reality, reality TV. TV, but it was his movie. His everything was built around him, not the others. He carried it. I mean, look at Robert didn't get a nomination. Yeah, he didn't. He should have. Yeah. He did not get a. I should record. agree. He, there was a. There was. I mean, we're talking of, of everything we saw. I mean, I like the, uh, you know, the you know the the top the, the sewer, with uh, but I think the best that oh, we saw Sienna was Cinema Verde. Totally, yeah, because, because it was done, we're not only talking, I mean, I got to look for, I know it got a lot of technical things, but it was the best photograph thing, the best edited, the best sound work, because they were doing a movie about a movie 
being filmed by a, a movie. There were just there was three different levels at the same time. They, they actually did a, they did a really good job. And that. they did it so seamlessly, like they were talking about the part. Uh, what well, we she even mentioned it. Um, I thought it was you know Tim and it was the other guy. You know because they the people the editors melded everybody so seamlessly into the historical archive stuff. You really couldn't tell for a few. And you're looking yeah, at them, take a double take. And then all oh that's that's not Diane Lane. Mm -hmm. And this is the whole thing. It was probably it should win everything and probably won't. It'll win yeah. tech it's gonna win for editing. Well you know Melter Pitt Pierce is a favorite. We really yeah. like that one. That actually I need to see that one. Well actually here's the I, I actually got I got the review material for Melder Pierce also. What's that? Uh, well, I don't know why, but they tend to send me naked pictures of naked girls. I got uh, I got naked uh, wood, and I got naked, you know, Kate Winsett. I could care less. It's just like you don't save them. But they send out those PR things. For some reason, they send those things out. You know, for your consideration. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not an Emmy member either. I never was. Which is probably why I didn't get my Emmy. Oh, yes, now we know why. I didn't join. You know, because I, I was already in one union. It wasn't doing me any good, so... Okay, here's a good one. What are the chances in the world that you're going to get an Emmy nomination for doing this? You still got a nomination. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't say a damn word for 39 weeks. Not one word. Not one word. All I would do is go... You apparently were convincing enough to get an Emmy nomination. Uh, oh, I, I, it works like this. The episode where what basically said it best, which is what, you know, they said. And I walk in looking for the looking for the guy, and they said the one one of them says like Andrew Buchanan says to Chill Wilson. Who is it? 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 Who is it?